right. I think we're live. We are live. <laughs> so we're uh, we're currently playing one of my favorite games from Clay, another Canadian studio based out of Vancouver. Uh, big shout out to my buddy Jan Hutchings over there. Uh, this is Mark of the Ninja. Fantastic game, too. Absolutely fantastic game. Uh, just brilliantly designed. Um, amazing look. Uh, just fantastic use of UI and color. Mm -hmm. And uh, you it's know, all hand drawn too. That's mm -hmm. what I, that's what really drew me to like most of Clay's games. Like the animation is really fantastic. Absolutely which, brilliant sound. Uh, just such a, a cool cool game. Anybody who hasn't played this and likes a kind of a a mix of action and like tactics, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's definitely worth picking up. Trying yeah, out. it's like a modern two D Tenchu. Yeah. It's also, it feels like a bit of a puzzle game. You mm -hmm. don't spend a lot of time running around and um, like attacking stuff willy-nilly. It's all about sure. it's like picking apart a room like a puzzle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's the whole point, right? You mm -hmm. gotta find whatever your objective happens to be. And mm -hmm. hey, the doorbell just rang. <laughs> the hand of Dan. Somebody's which, here. Yeah, has abandoned us to. Oh no. You guys are not going to get to see us for a while. Yeah. I'm just going to keep on playing Mark of the Ninja here. Mm -hmm. We're going to fill out a whole hour. You're not going to hear anything about the games. Yeah. And so to many of you, that's a new voice you're <laughs> hearing. Uh, this is uh, Luke Rideout. You'll Hi guys. be able to see him in a moment. Yes. Uh, and I'm Lee Geel. I'm the marketing and PR guy over here at uh, Beamdog. And, uh, yes, I can't remember what Phil my... Phil is already disappointed in us. I can see him saying... Uh, well, you know, it's kind of what he does. <laughs> He's just disappointed in general. We're playing games from 2003. Yeah, and, yeah. I'm sorry, Phil, that we're not reliving your memories. It's at least 10 years old. Yep. Um, the game is, like, you know, junior high age. Oh, at this point. I don't even want to think of that. It's... That's, uh, Glad we're living up to your expectations, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> too real. Too real. Uh, good stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one of the things that I really liked about this game is that there's so many ways to get through a level. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, the ability to just sort of... Well, uh, they, they really, like, I'm sure, planned for that. There's a lot of ways to get around. It's, it's not quite like your sequence breaking by going through these... Uh, mm -hmm hidden passages and so on. But well, you want to... Uh, you feel accomplished. You want to sneak thing. through each level and go through it all just to pick up all the, the extra items that we can get experience or points that you can spend. Oh, you know, yeah. completionists. Nobody's completionist in this live stream. <laughs> Not a single one. <laughs> I don't believe that. Okay. Yeah. I don't think you've you've found and killed anybody since we started the stream, have you? Yeah, I did. You I'm, kill everybody before we started? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I, Can't get caught if everyone's dead. That's right. <laughs> that's the uh, that's the true way to play a stealth game. Yeah, just murder everyone, hide all the bodies in the same spot, and uh, you know, have fun with it. Um, one of the really fun mechanics from this game is that you um. Oh, what is it? You. So you kill a guy mm -hmm. and then you throw the body at another dude. Oh, yeah. So it Use terrorizes the body as a projectile him. Yep. And scare the hell out of him. Yeah. Yep. And then that causes the uh, him to shoot a third guy. Oh, there we go. So that's what we call a uh, a chain reaction of uh There we go. of murder. And he's just having a nice nap. There's yep. uh yeah, nothing going on there. Let's <laughs> see. I'll distract I don't think there is him. a PG version Ooh. of uh, Mark of the Ninja. Stab. No. No, he's just, like I said, nap time. Newer game, newer blood effects. That's right. I mean, you know, it's not Fallout level of uh, of gore, so at least we got that going for us. Mm hmm. Well, no gibbing in this game, I <laughs> believe. Cool. It's true. Yeah. It is true. You can't just shoot somebody until they explode, like, and half of their body lands on the ground. So what do you think? Have we wasted enough time here? Well, you know, uh, I guess. Yeah. Should we actually like talk about real things? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. We we could share the latest Beamdog news. Uh, Who wants to hear that? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Dan, you want to bring us back up to the live stream? All right. Yep. Cool. Right. Seven second delay. 
Yes. And uh, there's a, there's a kill switch at my foot. So mm-hmm. if uh, Luke starts going off and revealing too many secrets, we'll uh, we'll be you know pulling that kill switch. And by kill switch, I actually mean my th- like a knife. Uh, it's not really a switch. It's we, just a kill Luke thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trent uh, Trent took all his knives with him, so we can't do that. My foot's That's actually true. Just, Usually there are just knives. Yeah. Uh, um, my foot's tangled in the uh, the power bar here, so uh, I'm going to pull that and try mm-hmm. not to get electrocuted. So please don't share anything terrible. All right. So once again, I'm Lee Giel. I'm the marketing and PR guy here at uh, Beam Dog. I do all the happy talk. So. Uh, yeah, you'll be hearing that from me. Uh, this is Luke Rideout. This Hello. is our new your producer now. I'm a producer. Uh, I do a little bit of design type stuff as well. But yeah, I am Giant Phil. Yes. And you can tell that because he has the hat. I have the hat. Yeah. Um, I grew a beard and shaved my head just for you guys. So, yep. uh, so uh, we felt that there was a bit of a transition period. We wanted to make sure that uh, you all felt comfortable with Phil leaving and Luke coming in. So uh, we we're just trying to transition gracefully between the two. Uh, in a few months, you'll see uh, Luke with his actual flowing Fabio locks. Those don't exist. <laughs> no, I'm afraid... Uh, I started going bald in my early 20s, and uh, it was just no longer an option. Okay, so just like Phil. Yep. All right, so let's uh, let's start off here with uh, some marketing news. Marketing news. We'll talk about Beamdog news. Mm-hmm. We'll go into uh, 2.5, what's happening on that front. Yes. Neverwinter, we'll have some uh, questions for Luke so you can get to know him, and we'll be answering your questions throughout. So <laughs> That's right, Phil Enhanced Edition. Yeah, uh, so a comment. Phil plus about 100 kilograms. <laughs> Comment so. uh, from the stream, Phil is, uh, or Luke is Phil Enhanced Edition. There, there we go. go. Uh, we'll have a whole selection of DLC for you to purchase later in the stream. All right, so Beamdog News. Uh, PAX West, we are going to be there next week. It's going to be so much fun. I can't wait to see all of you. Uh, it'll be myself wandering around. Uh, Trent is there. Uh, you may see a wild cam in the picture. We'll be introducing our new uh, community manager, Sarah, who's in the chat right now. Uh, SD underscore Beamdog, you've seen her in previous live streams, in the chat for pre- previous live streams. Uh, so she'll be hosting our Beamdog Twitch panel. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, not Twitch panel, but we'll be live on Twitch Saturday. Beamdog panel, yes. that will all be on Twitch. Yeah, words in order. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's Saturday at 1 p.m., so I would love to see you there. Uh, we've got uh, a lot of stuff to talk about, uh, a few cool secrets to share, uh, lots of story time, and uh, we'll be giving away shirts in the lot. Li- well, like this one. Yes, shirts at the event. I got uh, mine today. Yeah. Uh, I'll be wandering around PAX, so if you see me, uh, be sure to say hi, and I will probably have a shirt for you. Uh, so at PAX, uh, during the live stream, we will be giving away another one of our portrait prize packs. So if you are t- tuned in to the Beamdog channel during our live stream, we will be picking somebody from that live stream to do a portrait of. Yes. In the same way that we did with the um, Road to 2.0, mm-hmm. the uh, Neverwinter Nights uh, li- live stream. So uh, please join us there. And one person from the panel, or who have, is live at the panel, who is lined up, to ask a question will also be chosen. So you have two chances, two different chances. I mean, to win. yeah, unless I suppose you could be like streaming it on Twitch on your cell phone yeah. while you're well, sitting in the hey, auditorium. Technology, you know, I want to see you Ex-plot. guys double up. Yeah, see, there we go. He's helping <laughs> you out already. He's on your side. Cool. So that's PAX. Uh, yeah, like I said, we'll be live streamed. Uh, tune in and watch that. Uh, all the details about that contest will be on our blog soon. Yep if they're not already. Uh, so, right, Sarah has asked me to make sure that you RSVP to the live stream via Eventbrite. Mm-hmm. Just a reminder, no actual benefit to doing so, but uh, <laughs> It's please. a benefit to us. Yeah, it's a benefit to us. It's to a benefit to coming. you. It's a reminder. Please, just sign up. Phil? You can say, I'm X, and yeah. we'll go, we know who yeah. you are. Phil, I want to see you signed up. Except Lee will. because I know approximately where you live, so uh, let's make that happen. Mm -hmm. Um, Right. Then after PAX, we'll be at Edmonton Expo. So we'll have a uh, a large booth there. We'll be uh, hanging out, doing some contests, giveaways. Yes, Luke will be there. You can actually meet me if you want to. I don't know who would. You can poke him. He's real. Yep. 
I'm like uh, the Pillsbury Doughboy. Oh, man. <laughs> You're cool. Except my hee-hees are not nearly as yeah. fun. And, oh, uh, call out to uh, our friends at uh, By Fans For Fans. They'll be selling Beamdog Steam Keys and uh, St- uh, Siege of Dragon Spirit Collector's Editions mm-hmm. at PAX. So, yes. yes. So there's that. If you want one, you don't have to wait for shipping. Mm-hmm. You just buy it. We put it in your hands. Yep. And they've got a great deal on it. So you'll see more about that uh, at PAX and around PAX. We'll be doing the same deals at Edmonton Expo. So just one more reason to come see us at, uh, at a convention. Yes. Right. Uh, speaking of many. sales, uh, there's the Fanatical sale going on. So mm-hmm. if you're looking for a Beamdog product, uh, any of our games, most of our DLC is on sale on at Fanatical. Mm-hmm. So pop over there. Uh, you'll get a great deal for a Steam key that you can redeem on Steam. Um, on to Beamdog News. On to Beamdog News. Yes, we're hiring. So we have new hires and many they new hired hires. Me. And we want more people to join us. You have a we've, got our, to. we've got our new office that's... Uh, when are we moving into that kind of Probably tomorrow, end. Dan? <laughs> uh, Dan says end of October. Tomorrow. Yeah. October, yes. So we've got a new office. Uh, we've got almost four times the amount of space. Mm-hmm. So we need people to fill that space. Yeah. We yeah. need to fill it up about as badly as it's filled up here so we can move into even larger spaces. That's right. Uh, so we can move into the next BioWare office. There and you eventually go. we'll just Check spend them out so that yeah. we can get in, yeah. Well, no, no. We're uh, we're moving into the old old BioWare office. Oh, okay. We're then two behind. Yeah, Got then there's it. the BioWare office down south and they're moving into the uh, Epcor Tower. That's true. So, in about they're a moving. Yeah, in yeah. about a decade we'll be in the Epcor Epcor Tower. Yeah. Called it 2028. Boom. There we go. It's a promise. <laughs> It's not a promise. No. We'll see. That's not a promise. Cool. So before we move on to uh, anything else, uh, let's answer some of these questions yes, here. Yes, there are questions. Cool. So um, here's a question for you. What for about a Shaman BG2 Stronghold for next patch? Wow. Um, I mean, I can I can see about looking into it, but uh, no promises right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think... Um, uh, I can't recall correctly, but I think the shaman gets to do the cleric stronghold quest. That makes sense. But I I don't recall. It's been a little while. Uh, something we can look into. That's a lot of work. Yeah, unfortunately, new content is. If we're gonna do any new content, it's gonna take a while. So um, yeah, but it ha- it has its stronghold quest mm-hmm. already. So sure. cool. Yeah, All got right. something already. Uh, here's another one for you. Any news on Arcanum EE? Arcanum EE. Well, let's talk a little bit about Arcanum. Mm. Yeah, that was a. It was a fun game. I, it was another one of the games that I played when I was younger, and uh, yeah, it's. I mean, yeah, same answer as Phil every week. I'm afraid uh, it's just not uh, not something we have the ability to do at the moment. Okay. Uh, who knows what the future holds? Yeah. Um, I have inherited most of uh, Phil's responsibilities in that area, so mm-hmm. we'll see if I'm effective at doing these things. Yeah, well, uh, I'll share you a little secret. Mm-hmm. Phil actually left the company to do the Arcanum Enhanced Edition. There you go. So he's just working on it on his own in his basement. I, I think he's going to do a great job, and you'll see a release on that in 2029. Love you, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, any news on achievements? And achievements the- for, yes. Uh, achievements for Neverwinter yes. are currently being uh, investigated. We are planning on rolling those out once we have a complete plan for achievements. And right. we have another uh, update to piggy them back, piggyback them on. Right. Yep. So uh, our one of our new hires, Elise, who's fantastic, mm-hmm. uh, great to work with. Uh, she's currently looking into that. That's correct. So it's moving slowly but it is moving yeah absolutely cool. it, it is in progress right now that is one of her main tasks at the moment cool cool all right so uh, there are more questions here yep. but uh first we have let's other do things. yes since all these questions are largely neverwinter nights let's talk about uh the 2.5 up yes since we've been talking about neverwinter nights let's uh change the subject and talk about baldur's gate and icewind dale and siege of dragon siege of dragon sphere and Baldur's Gate 2. And Baldur's Gate 2. And Baldur's Gate 2. Uh, yes. There are things happening. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Uh, Baldur's Gate and Siege of Dragonspear, as well as Icewind Dale, have been rolled out everywhere, as far as I know, mm-hmm. on 2.5.17. If we're missing anything, you guys will tell us. Uh, but I don't think so. Except for... The Mac App the Store. The Mac App Store. 
I knew you were you were getting ready for it. Yeah. Uh, yes. So Mac App Store is currently in the build process. Before we push it out live, we do need to QA it because yeah. it's been a long time since we released a game on the Mac App Store. And though the build that goes to the Mac App Store is uh, the same as the Mac build for mm -hmm. the most part, uh, we want to make sure nothing breaks. Yep. Yep. Uh, I am currently doing all the store metadata, which is my favorite task. Copy, paste, copy, yeah. paste, copy, hey, paste. Hey, remember how I said I was going to do a thing and still haven't done it? Yeah, thanks for that. Yep. No, so uh, <laughs> it is It is moving. Yeah. It's moving slowly. I'm so sorry, yeah. but it is moving. Make sure to Sparta kick me back at my desk. <laughs> I, do that. I keep right. getting like caught on my way back to my desk with other things mm -hmm. that need to be done. So. So uh, after the Mac App Store build, we'll be looking at Planescape Torment mm -hmm. Enhanced Edition. Yep. Um, uh, we understand that uh, 3.14 with uh, the check lo localization is only on Steam. Yes. Uh, I really want to see that on uh, Google Play, on uh, the App Store, on the Mac App Store, yep. And that GOG. plate is spinning as well. Uh, yep. We know that the yeah, 3.1.4 has been uh, yeah, released in one place. So we have to release it in more places. Cool. And uh, one of the things that we missed on some of the builds that went out were the adding the Rhodes 2.0 portraits. Yes, that uh, is also on its way. Yes, so that's something that we're working on too. Uh, again, sorry that we missed that. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a lot of balls in the air here. So yeah. let's. we're going to try and make sure that you know we do a little bit better in the future yeah. and a little bit faster. But Yeah, so uh, you waited a while for mm -hmm. 2.5.17. Mm -hmm. to go live and uh we recognize that uh yeah two years is a long time to yep. wait for something to come out so cool. uh yeah in the uh in the near future um we're going to do some smaller updates some f continued bug fixing that's going to need to be done for infinity engine because mm. you guys know there's still a few things in there that need to be fixed there's a lot of data issues um mm -hmm. fixing the way that some spells work when they don't work correctly right. uh text issues and so on so we're going through a backlog of bugs that were earmarked for um reinvestigation after right. 2.5 mm -hmm. shipped 2.5 has shipped so it is now my job to make sure that we can get as much of that done as possible in increments right and uh speaking of 2.5 again uh on Android, there's this fuzzy issue I'm hearing about. Yes! So, Android users, we hear your voices, the, the fuzzy screen. So, let me first explain what's happened. Um, this was a complaint that started happening with BG2 mm -hmm. uh, on one of the patches that we released there. Um, this was a fix for a certain subset of devices that could not handle the game's performance at a certain resolution. So uh, because Infinity Engine is kind of a finicky engine and doesn't have certain, the w certain ways to detect certain things, we implemented a fix where if the screen resolution was below a certain threshold, we applied at boot a uh, scaled down of everything. So it gets scaled down and then your hardware scales it back up to fit your full screen. But right. that means that because there's this natural filtering that happens when uh, things are scaled up, it looks kind of muddy. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like you're kind of looking at it through a really dirty screen. So uh, we're looking at ways that we can fix that problem okay. uh, at the moment and hopefully we will have something for you in uh, one of the nearer upcoming patches. Okay. Fantastic. Cool. And uh, one other thing about the Infinity Engine, you had something you want to talk about for modders. Yes. So uh, this was something that had been mentioned a while ago on one of the live streams, I believe. But there is a tool uh, called the Bammer, uh, which is a tool that, uh, that helps with the process of creating BAMs, which basically are like... Um, part of the monster and character files. Okay. Uh, it is kind of a pain to create one currently from a 3D model with animations because there's a lot of steps involved in that. So we are uh, working on right now um, doing an update to the tool mm -hmm. so that it is uh, not as old and uh, dusty as it was. Right. And once that's available, uh, we will be uh, shipping that out to you guys. Yeah, 
So we're going to create uh, or release a new tool for all your modders who want to create new content for the Infinity Engine games. This will make it a little bit easier for you to uh, create new sprites. Mm -hmm. uh, fair warning, it's still a pain in the ass. Yes. <laughs> it's, I mean, like, you still need to be able to create, like, an animated FBX mm -hmm. or, yeah, that's like an animated model. Um, but this should help make it a lot easier of a process because uh, we've taken out a lot of guesswork from you. Um, there are still steps that need to be taken, and we're working on documenting those as well. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that'll be good for you. Okay, cool. Good stuff. Yay. All right, let's uh, let's get on to some other questions before we move on to Neverwinter Nights. Uh, let's see, top of the list, Neverwinter Nights on GOG. ETA, working on it. Yes, <laughs> soon. Yes. Um, yeah, there are there are challenges around that. Uh, we are working on the 64-bit yep. uh, issue currently as well, uh, and yeah, the 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 best I can give you is soon, but like not, you know, three four months down the line soon. Much mm -hmm. sooner than that. Okay. Cool. Uh, are you planning to add the Bard songs from Icewind Dale EE into BG and BG2 EE? I was not informed that that was a thing that people wanted, but I can look into it uh, if that is something that people really do want. Um, yeah, okay. make your voices heard. Okay. In the forum. Uh, yep. Let us know in the forum. Bug Julius. Uh, we'll take a look into it. Just keep bugging us about that because yep. we have a lot of things up in the air. Yeah, there is this list of uh, community requests mm -hmm. for these games, and it is enormous. Yes. Uh, Julius provided it to me a week ago, yep. and I still haven't finished reading all of the uh, all of the items on it. Yep. So uh, we pick things out from that list whenever we can, and. Uh, as mentioned, it is sizable. Yep. Uh, Dan is bugging us to give away a t-shirt. Uh-oh, t-shirt time. Yep. So if you would like one of these, make sure to watch our live streams. And uh, we give these away usually around two or three per live stream. Yep. Uh, oh, this one. This one's mine. Yes. Uh, we will not be giving t-shirts from our bodies mm -hmm. to yours, uh, unlike Phil. Unlike Phil's sweat hat. Yes. Uh, Speaking did, of which. Did we ship that sweat hat out? <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. So if you won the sweat hat last last stream, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> please, <laughs> uh, please get in touch, and we will send that to you, and you can clone Phil from it. Uh, so today's T-shirt, the first mm -hmm. T-shirt of today, is to Charissa one zero six six. Charissa ten sixty six. Congratulations! You won yourself a T-shirt. Cool. Uh, you are clearly better than Charissa ten sixty seven. And 1065. Yes. All 1066 right. 1066 was the best number today. Cool. Uh, any updates on the Icewind Dale 2 source code? You had something to investigate. We are still investigating. Yes. Uh, it is, um, yeah, we, we, we are not convinced that it is lost to the sands of time. There are thoughts about where it may be yet, and we are kicking down doors and uh, interrogating people. Mm -hmm. So... We'll see how cool. it goes. I am a translator for your games. So mm -hmm. when you upgrade translator tool, it's very hard to, to uh, translate there. Uh, yeah. Uh, we have been focusing very much on getting the games themselves updated. Mm -hmm. But uh, I am interested in helping the modding and, uh, and volunteer community. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, that's something that's on my list. But the list is very long. Yep. So um, I will update. Uh, as we get closer to that. Yep. So uh, I can dig into that a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. um, we have a web developer here named Ryan, who's yep. fantastic. He's been helping me out with the beamdog.com store. Mm -hmm. So we've been doing a lot of fixes on that side. And uh, also he's responsible for fixing some of the issues in the forum that we saw earlier in the week. Uh, he's been absolutely fantastic and doing some updates to the translator tool is something that is uh, coming. It's something that we're working towards, uh, especially with uh, Neverwinter Nights. I know that it's something that we'd like to have yes. in that tool so that uh, the volunteer translator teams can start digging into that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's coming, as mentioned, several times. We have a lot on the go here. Mm -hmm. And uh, as soon as we have something, we'll be sure to you know, announce it. We're hiring, but uh, we're still a small studio, right. so there's a, it takes time to do some, some things. And if you have theories. been watching our uh, job page, we will probably have quite a few more uh, postings up once we move into the new studio this mm -hmm. winter. So uh, keep an eye on those postings, watch our social media channels. Mm -hmm. We will have more postings up in the year to come. Yep. Cool. Sweet. 
All right. So I guess we're going to be moving straight into Neverwinter Nights questions. Okay. Uh, I'm seeing them here. I'm seeing them here. Uh, we've already talked about the GOG build coming yes. soon. Uh, we're you know just working slowly towards that. Uh, as soon as we have more to announce on that, we'll be sure to be shouting that from the, the mountaintops. Yes. There um, we, it will be announced as soon as it is ready to go. Yeah, we will drive four hours that way to the mountains, mm -hmm. and then we'll shout it. I and will shout at the top of my lungs, and I won't be able to speak for the yeah. next day. And I will work. tweet about it on Twitter. Yeah. Cool. I'll take a video of it. So last week we did... <laughs> <laughs> uh, last it happen. Yeah. Last week we released the Enhanced Greatsword Pack on Steam yes. Workshop. Uh, we it's have pretty. more content like that coming. Nothing this week. Uh, we also don't have any builds coming this week on the development build. Uh, our friend Niv is working on the GOG build right now, I yes, believe. Yes, that's correct. So yeah, uh, Niv is currently dedicated to making GOG finish working. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, due to that, uh, that has taken his main priority at the moment. So no new, no new builds this week. Yeah. So uh, right now, GOG and 64-bit, those are our two priorities. Uh, and then on Soon top of that, TM. yeah, Sued TM. I'm <laughs> going to get that as a T-shirt. Yeah, I you should just wear that at the show. Would, on the stream. would you all buy a shirt that says Beamdog soon TM? Because <laughs> we say that a lot, and I'm sorry that we say it a lot, but that's just kind of the nature of game development. Yeah. Cool. Uh, mobile development, actually. Mobile. Let's talk. A, let's talk a little bit about uh, Neverwinter Nights on mobile. We're making Neverwinter Nights work on mobile. Yes. It's looking really good right now. Uh, most of the play functionality is ready to go. The game uh, is controllable mm -hmm. currently, although the UI still needs a lot of love. Um, menus and so on need to be reevaluated because porting a PC uh, menu directly to a mobile device mm -hmm. is never the best choice. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, we're going to be doing a little bit of work on the UI there, um, which very well may be backportable to the PC build as well. So yeah. people who are wondering how UI stuff is going to work and like scaling and just the way that UI works, we're looking into that and we hope to have that fixed. And that's sort of the major, uh, the remaining major work on getting the mobile port done. Yeah. So uh, it, there is a lot of work to be had there. There's a lot of work there to do. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah. um, I know that some people are like, ugh, mobile. A lot of the work that we're doing on the mobile side of things is going to show up in the uh, PC side of things yeah. as benefits. Um, I know that the 64-bit support is a yeah. big thing. Uh, UI improvements, that's another big thing. So uh, all the work that we're doing there is going to be reflected in the PC version, and uh, that is a good thing. Yes, Cool. Yeah, just because we're working on mobile and it is listed as mobile work doesn't mean that that mobile work is not going to greatly benefit the PC build. Cool. Uh, and as mentioned, you know, the translator tool, we want to bring that to Neverwinter Nights, so there's a lot to, lot to work on there. Cool. Uh, let's see. On my list here, I have portrait packs. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the things that we have been asked for is more voice sets, more portraits, etc. Yep. Uh, I am currently working on bringing some of the other portrait packs, like the um, Faces of Good and Evil that's currently on Baldur's Gate, to some of the other games. Mm -hmm. So Baldur's Gate 2, Icewind Dale, N Neverwinter Nights. And then we're going to take the, uh, the Heroes of Neverwinter pack and backport it to all the other games. So uh, that will be something that is available for... Um, it'll be available for purchase. Sorry, we need to make money. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, we'll be bringing more portraits and more voice sets to you in the near future. Yeah, some exciting things coming down the pipe. Mm -hmm. But the community portraits, uh, the winners there will be releasing for free in, um, in patches. I don't want to do any sort of evil thing. Yeah, like, stuff that we've released yeah. to the forums for free that you can get on the PC. Uh, at, yeah, they're going to come to the mobile, yeah. and we're not going to charge for those. Yeah, so it's as... It's going to uh, be something you can select in a new patch. Yeah, soon. so as we go forward, you will be seeing a little bit of new content and then some other stuff available for purchase, which is, I think, pretty cool. All right, so uh, before we get into some questions for you, sure. I'm going to ask you some questions from the fans. Cool. Uh, are there... Is there any interesting tool set features coming for Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition? Uh, I mean, like I said, I am focused on giving a little bit of love to the modding community and so on down the line. So, I mean, we're going to see what we can add. But again, uh, just getting the, the remaining features that we're already talking about for the games is top priority right now. 
Hmm. Was there any ever any update about Jahira's voice actor for Siege of Dragonspear? Yeah, that, that one? you know, I hadn't heard of this one. Um, Julius or Sarah, if you could remind me to look into that after uh, the stream. Uh, I think that's just something that's fallen off our plates. Uh, I blame Phil. Uh, we're going to be using that for months to come. Mm -hmm. I might make a hashtag blame Phil t-shirt. <laughs> Yeah, all right. Uh, let's see. Quick question, which not, that's not too quick. Is there any update on multi-core threading for ne Neverwinter Nights server plus tool set? Running on one processor only is a pinch. Uh, I'll have to look into that. Okay. All right. Kalar Argent and Corwin in Baldur's Gate 2 is possible? Question mark? I mean, possible is a relative question. Like I said before, uh, content, new content is uh, a lot of work. We could theoretically just put them in there as models and mm -hmm. we could say that we did it, but we don't want to, like, do no half measures here, mm -hmm. right? So if we were going to put these characters into the game, it would require quite a bit of work on our side. So mm -hmm. it's not something that we could do in the short, short term. But, um, again, this is something that uh, I have looked at. So mm -hmm. we'll, yeah. see. we'll see what we can do there. Uh, but, again, um, bug fixing and just getting the game into the right state it needs to be before we can do any additional content stuff yeah. is, is priority. Yeah. I was a big fan of Siege of Dragonspear. I wasn't with the company when it released, but mm -hmm. uh, I enjoyed, enjoyed the game. Yeah. It was fantastic. It was uh, some really, some really clever uh, environmental puzzles in there that I, I thought just really fun. Uh, and I would love to see some of those storylines continued into Baldur's Gate 2, which mm -hmm. is my personal favorite Infinity yeah. Engine title. I want to give a little bit of love to Baldur's Gate 2. I've been working on all the other Infinity G Engine games. Baldur's Gate 2 was my personal favorite of the Infinity Engine games okay. as well. So. so there's some bias on this side of the table. It's true. Uh, no promises, but... No promises, yeah. no immediate promises. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't make that kind of a promise right now, but yeah, um, yeah uh, it's not off the table. Yeah, uh, Trent has threatened us with bodily harm in the same way that he has done with Phil in the past uh, if we make any serious promises here. So uh, if we are just, if we disappear for a week or two, mm -hmm. uh, that's the reason. Yeah, yeah, I mean... Just as a general rule of thumb, con new content is tough. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. it. Um, I've got a question here about Infinity Engine games being ported onto console. It's not something we can talk about at this time. Sorry. Uh, we're really focused on uh, PC. We're focused on mobile. And we've got a lot on the plate right now. I'd love to do that. I'd love to, like, I want to make an Alexa build. Mm -hmm. Skyrim did it. Yeah. <laughs> Would it map to a uh, controller well, do you think? Uh, well, I mean, that's voice controlled there. But <laughs> oh. All right. Yeah. Well, it's something that we'll look into. Uh, I know that there are people in the studio here that would love to do that sort of mm -hmm. thing, but uh, yeah. Yeah, we got one guy who wants to put everything on everything. So. Yeah. yeah. Alfonso is the master of porting. <laughs> uh, I fully expect to see uh, Neverwinter Nights on a toaster, yep. uh, Baldur's Gate on a Blackberry. It should be... Uh, I, I, Icewind Dale on your fridge, where yeah, it belongs. Yeah. You know, I saw a, a, a TV, not on a fridge, but on a dishwasher the other day, and that confused the hell out of I, me. I don't know why I can see fridge more than I can see a dishwasher. Hmm? Well, dishwasher I mean, is down here. Yeah, so fridge is also like, what is in my fridge right now? I don't mm -hmm. want to open it and waste electricity. Why mm -hmm. don't I waste electricity with this monitor that's telling what's in my fridge when mm -hmm. I can just open it? So the dishwasher, you get to watch, wash your, uh, watch your dishes washed mm -hmm. live. Maybe you can stream it That'd be live cool. on Twitch, my dishes. <laughs> Someone would do it. Cool. Uh, so let's move on to... Uh, let's do these two questions, sure. and we'll move on to some questions for you. All right. Uh, new classes like Mystic Knight mm -hmm. is possible. Uh, I assume that's for Neverwinter Nights? Uh, yeah. So classes are, uh, well, yeah, for Neverwinter Nights, um, yeah, creation of new classes is a possibility. There are still some challenges around that, but mm -hmm. uh, again, um, I'd love to to do what I can to make modding and creation of new content for Neverwinter especially mm -hmm. easier. Cool. Uh, 
is Beamdog still working closely with the community? Of course. You, uh, you guys are involved with all of our betas. Uh, we have the volunteer translation teams. Mm -hmm. uh, Julius works very closely with everybody in the forums to make sure that uh, the features and fixes that you want on Neverwinter are reflected on the uh, uh, the Trello page. Mm -hmm. And um, anytime you guys bring up an issue, it does get logged. Um, we really love it when you log issues for us in the <laughs> <laughs> in Redmine. Yep. So there are some things we wouldn't know about if you guys didn't tell us about it. Yeah. Um, we have we have QA internally. Yes. Um, but you never know what you're going to run into until you put the game in front of a hundred thousand people. Yeah. And our QA team is absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, Kristen, uh, Andrew, and the rest are just amazing. Yep. Uh, I know that you people see bugs all the time, but you would see so many more yeah. if they weren't doing For their every job. Every one bug that that you guys have found, there are about mm, two or three thousand that you haven't seen. Yes, absolutely. Uh, any news about the new Baldur's Gate Collector's Edition? None just yet. Uh, it's on Luke's plate. Yep, he I'm has, working on it. Yeah, he has a plate-sized plate that has this much work on it. You bet. Um, I love that though. That's <laughs> Yeah, and you're doing an absolutely fantastic job. Well, You've been with the company for about a month now? Yeah, I started July 16th. Cool, cool. All right, and uh, one last thing before we jump into some questions that uh, the team and the community have provided. Uh, have you guys considered doing Demon Stone or Dark Alliance? Uh, basically, to make it a very short answer... We have a list of every D and D game that's ever been made. We have considered every D and D game. Yes, and uh, <laughs> I know that Cam would love us to do everything. Yeah, uh, I literally made this list, uh, and yeah, so we would love to do every D and D title out there, mm -hmm. but some of them we can, some of them we can't. Yeah, there's always uh, a lot of the ones paperwork. that we can and we can't. We can't talk about until we can. Yep. So as soon as we are doing a game, we will be sure to announce it. And uh, if there is a game that you want us to do, just keep telling us. I know that the first col uh, comment in all of our YouTube uh, posts for the last six months has been Arcanum An Enhanced Edition. Mm -hmm. So, you know, keep that up. Yeah. Cool. The, the, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Squeaky wheel gets the kick. There you go. My <laughs> terrible Minsk impression. Actually, speaking <laughs> of Minsk, uh, I really want to bring the Minsk costume down to PAX West for mm. Trent to wear yep. and at Edmonton Expo. So fingers crossed we'll have uh, Minsk live at those events. I don't produce Trent, but if I could, I'd make sure it happened. Yeah, I, I do what I can. <laughs> I make things sound like a good idea, and yep. then he tells me it's a good idea, and then we do it. Nice. Yeah. Cool. It's good flow. So let's talk about Luke. Let's talk about me. Yes. So if you have questions for Luke, drop them in the chat, and we'll be sure to uh, ask them. Yep. Most of them. All right. So let's start off. Uh, you are a producer here at Beamdog. So what does that role mean? What do you do? Well, I wear many hats. <laughs> but uh, no, as a producer at Beamdog, uh, in particular, my job is uh, I am the the owner of all of the legacy titles that we okay. have. So Baldur's Gate, uh, Icewind Dale, and um, Baldur's Gate 2, Planescape, and Neverwinter Nights. Mm -hmm. So my job primarily is to uh, figure out what needs to be done on these projects, figure out what is possible to do, uh, and put the right resources in the right places to get those things done. Yep. So yep. That as well as like doing things like creating collector's editions yep. for games that are coming out in 20 years. <laughs> that uh, came out 20 years ago, I yeah. should say. And maybe uh, collector's editions that will come out in 20 years. So 40th year, 40th uh, anniversary edition. Yep. So you know, doing the work now, might as mm -hmm. well do the work for then. So that makes sense. So that's not a small role whatsoever. You've got a lot on your plate. That's true. Cool. So how did you get into the game industry? Was there a specific game that inspired you? Um, well, there's plenty of games that inspire me. I got in the games industry uh, quite a long time ago. I was just lucky, honestly. I had a friend that worked at QA and Konami, mm -hmm. and uh, they were looking for guys, and he told me that they were looking for guys. So I applied. I went in for an interview. They seemed to like me, so that's how I got into games the first time. Mm -hmm. I got out of games after that for a little while, uh, because I moved back to Japan. I actually lived there for quite a while. And um, I did 
the English teaching thing for a little while, and then I got back into video games working for a company called Acquire, which made like Tenchu and the Class of Heroes series and so on. I was a producer on Class of Heroes and uh, the Wizardry uh, reboot. Oh, yeah. Cool. So um, when you first joined the industry at Konami, was that in North America or in Japan? That was in California, in uh, Redwood City, before oh. they closed that studio down. Cool. Yep. All right. So... Um, specific games that inspired you that you know sparked that love of gaming well i mean i've been gaming since before i or since yeah probably before i have a memory uh my dad had a ti 99 4a so i played like mm. tunnels of doom mm. and um like uh, alpiner and stuff like that on those i played pole position and then we picked up a NES when i was like eight years old mm -hmm. um i was always into rpgs so i played a lot of the old final fantasy games um and then like onwards through snes i was a nintendo kid for a long time uh and then i found out that pc games are super powerful and really cool mm -hmm. so um fallout and of course the obligatory Baldur's gate and cool so do All you have those. a do you have a favorite classic title? A favorite classic title, my goodness. Um, I was always a big fan of the Fallout series. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Fallout. Uh, Fallout two, two was probably my favorite. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's where I always so go. Once you get to, once you get to New Reno and you start like fighting in the in the boxing ring. Yep. Fantastic. Yep. If you said Fallout Tactics, I don't know if we could be friends. <laughs> Fallout Tactics was just hard to play. <laughs> So uh, what other projects have you worked on? You've been in the industry for I a while. I have been in the industry for uh, off and on for about 14, uh, about a decade. About a decade? I want to say, yeah. Um, yeah, first game I worked on was a game called Shaolin Showdown on the Nintendo DS. It was based on a Nickelodeon property. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I worked on the Class of Heroes series. I worked on Gladiator Begins. Uh, the Wizardry reboot, so Labyrinth of Lost Souls and City of something or other. I don't know what the English title is because okay. I worked in Japanese. Mm -hmm. um, I moved from there to a studio called Premium Agency, which did a lot of outsourcing type stuff. Uh, they were the studio that did Bakugan Battle Brawlers. Um, <laughs> My favorite game. Hey, whose favorite game is it not? Is that proper <laughs> grammar? Uh, and then I moved back to Canada uh, after that, where I joined Frontier, the company that did Elite Dangerous, working on Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 on mobile. Cool. I am Canadian. All right. I was born in Nova Scotia, uh, but I moved to California when I was a kid, and then I moved to Japan, and then I moved back to Canada. World traveler. Yes. Cool. All right. Uh, so, in addition to the projects that you've worked on, yes, you do let's plays. <laughs> yes, I have a YouTube channel uh, called Level Zero NPCs. You can find it if you look for it. Um, we play classic games. Cool. Uh, Planescape was among those. Yeah, you uh, you were doing a Planescape let's play even before yep. the uh, you applied for the company. Yes, I was. So we started playing uh, Planescape a while ago. Uh, it wasn't performing so well, so it's on hiatus at the moment. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you guys say you really want to see it, uh, Jensen Ova, who I believe is in the chat, uh, will cry because uh, he <laughs> is my co-host. All right. Uh, and then, but we'll do it. Cool. Please do it. <laughs> yeah. I see it. All there right. You go. Cool. Uh, big question here. Final Fantasy 4 or Final Fantasy 6? And why? Um, Final Fantasy VI, because I loved the uh, apocalypse subplot thing that happened about halfway through the game. Yep. That was great. And, like, huge ensemble cast. A lot of fun. Cool. I'm, I was, oh, I'm always torn about that. Uh, are, you are you fluent in Japanese? I am. Cool. Yeah. Say I, something. Uh, <laughs> what do you want me to say? Like that, you always, people put you on the, uh, on the spot for there, but... Hi. Nihongo wa ni shabaremasu. All right. I will assume that wasn't rude. <laughs> I said I can speak Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Normally. So uh, we've got some questions for the community here. Okay. So what's your favorite aspect of the job? My favorite aspect of the job oh, uh, is, I mean, honestly, being able to work on these games I grew up playing. Yeah. This is great. Beamdog is, is amazing for, for curating these old games. Because, mm -hmm. um, I mean, like, my favorite, uh, like, marketplace for... for buying games has been GOG for years mm -hmm. because um, I'm, a, I'm an old timer and I play these games a lot and I mean I'm not like one of those people who hates new games but I do like reliving the uh, the glory days and I get to relive the glory days mm -hmm. every day here so All right. so there you go Do 
All you GOG fans out there, you have a champion within Beamdog. I love GOG. GOG's great. Cool. Uh, so what's your favorite aspect of being a producer? Being a producer uh, is that I get the 10,000-foot uh, view of the whole project. I get to see what's going on, uh, and I get to make a difference when, um, you know, I, I make sure that something happens, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I don't get to get my hands dirty doing the programming or the art, but um, I get to interact with all these amazingly talented people who are much better at, uh, you know, at making games than I am, but uh, I can still make my, I can still do my part. Cool. Uh, any tips out there or that you can throw out there for somebody who's not in the industry or is in the industry mm -hmm. and wants to become a producer? Learn to use Excel. There we go. <laughs> Everybody's favorite tool. Learn to use Excel and uh, get good at uh, like scheduling and things like that. Um, project management software like Jira or mm. uh, Redmine or Mantis or any of those things. Mm -hmm. And people skills. People skills. All about them. People yes. Skills. And have a good memory for minute di details about uh, video game systems. Mm -hmm. uh, Here's one. Are you a dex-based or a strength-based fighter? I am a con-based fighter. I am a <laughs> tank, man. I am a bag of hit points. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm not going to ask that one. Uh, we already answered the patches for Planescape mm -hmm. thing. Uh, so what's your plan for future in Infinity Engine updates? Um, fewer bugs. Pure bugs. To start with. There yeah. we go. Um, I want to get the, um, the area of effect indicator that uh, Phil champions for mm -hmm. Icewind Dale onto the other games because mm -hmm. those are great. I want to uh, get some of the changes that we managed to roll out for 2.5.17 onto right. Baldur's Gate 2. Uh, and I just want to, I want to make sure that these games keep on moving in a positive direction. Mm -hmm. And speaking to the area of effect, um, indicator mm -hmm. uh we have seen that uh the community is kind of okay this is pretty cool uh oh i don't like that because it's not it's detracting from the original feel of the yep. game uh going forward that if that's something that goes into the game proper uh right now you can only activate that using a uh, lua command mm -hmm. um i think we'd like to see that as a disabled feature that you have to toggle on and off? Yeah, all, all new features. Um, we understand that uh, enhanced edition enhancements are not always welcome. So we want to offer these as an option for players and then have them something that's off that you can toggle on in the end, in the option menu. Okay, cool. Uh, here's a Neverwinter Nights question yes. for you. Uh, can the 64-bit, uh, 256 56, yep. limit... Uh, on classes easily be removed or lifted? I looked into this before the show, actually. I spoke to uh, Zach, who's kind of uh, led the charge on a lot of the Neverwinter stuff mm -hmm. uh, recently, and uh, maybe. We looked into it. There is a line in the code that basically uh, defines it as a byte. We might just be able to turn that into an int and ship it out, but that could, ca that could cause everything to set on fire. So mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to be... Um, careful about doing something like that uh but uh yeah we'll uh we'll mm -hmm. give it a shot cool so if money or time was not an issue mm -hmm. what would be your game or goal for a infinity engine title uh a new game a fully new uh, Infinity Engine game because uh, I think that uh, the Baldur's Gate story is well done. We we have some more stuff that I'd love to finish on Baldur's Gate as well. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I think Infinity Engine is uh, is clunky and and needs a lot of work still. But uh, yeah, like I think people still love playing these games. So. Yeah, cool. So yeah. if it, would it be still be D and D? And yeah, th this is just maybe. hypothetical, no promises. This is not us yeah, saying if we're I could do, doing a new game. If I could do a game like that, yeah, yeah D&D's good. Cool. Like any, D &D. Uh, any part of the various... Oh, worlds? man. Uh, I am DMing a Planescape game right now. Uh, Planescape's a great... Uh, yeah, it's a great setting. Spelljammer is really fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, weird alien spaceships flying, or uh, not even spaceships, boats flying through space. Mm -hmm. um, I think that Dark Sun hasn't gotten a lot of love recently. I would love to see a Dark Sun game myself. Yeah. yeah. There were some old Dark Sun games. 
some really old some dark really old dark sun games uh and uh, i all i also have a, a sweet spot in my heart for uh for horror so ravenloft yeah. is always fun too cool. so that's that's a lot of settings actually speaking of dark sun i just finished the five book series mm -hmm. uh that troy denning did Ooh. uh for dark sun and uh there's some really cool stuff in there. I feel like uh, that world mm -hmm. has so much to offer for yeah. a game. So, and only so many players have experienced it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Watsi, if you're watching, please bring that back as a setting. Give uh, us one more box. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Dan. Should we give away this T-shirt? Oh no! At the end, it says in brackets. Yeah. Sorry, you guys have to wait. Somebody won a T-shirt. Yes. You'll find out in ten minutes. All know. right. So, uh, da, 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 da. with the 2.x patches, a new UI was introduced. Yeah. Uh, are you still interested in improving it based on player feedback, or do we have a plan in-house? I am interested. Okay. Um, player feedback is valuable. We want our players to be happy with the game that we've given to them. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we want to incorporate what feedback we can get. There are certain things that we have to do that are not always going to be um, popular. Mm -hmm. uh, but in order for the game to be more optimized and to work better and to work on modern systems, mm -hmm. um, and in order for us to, especially since, I, again, I said I have a, a focus on helping our modding people, mm -hmm. um, useful for modders. You know, okay. um, I, I would love to make continue to make improvements to the UI system if we could. But again, uh, slow development. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, fair warning. There's been a lot of uh, feedback from the community on the there UI. There has been a lot of feedback. Yes. Uh, much of it conflicting. Yeah. So uh, we've yes. got so sifting through that and finding out what the best solution is is hard. Fair as enough. As well. Cool. Uh, Here's a question about the Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition team. Do yep. you have people who take care of specifically Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition aside from Niv? So, yes. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> on the Neverwinter Nights team, yeah. um, we've got Luke who's heading I'm it up. I'm producing. Uh, well, yeah, and and it, it's sort of uh, it's sort of the Niv show with Luke uh, driving like behind the wheel, <laughs> getting kicked in the shoulder. Yeah, a lot. and we also have Jason, who mm -hmm. was one of the original developers on Neverwinter Nights, mm -hmm. and he is fantastic. Uh, I don't think that we'd be moving along as quickly as no. we have uh, without him. Uh, we've got Zach. Uh, he was mentioned earlier. Yep. Fantastic guy. He's. Uh, He's just killing it over there, mm -hmm. and uh, we've got the uh, the Neverwinter Nights. Um, let's see who else is on that team. Andrews, our QA lead on mm -hmm. that team, and you know he's fantastic. I say fantastic a lot. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, that's right. So uh, it, uh, it's and a the Neverwinter mobile team. Like yes. once again, like yes. I said, uh, mobile development does not not help the PC build. So mm -hmm. anything that we're doing with mobile, uh, some of these features can be backported to the PC version to further improve it. Right. And then there's uh, newer hires like Sam mm -hmm. and Elise. Yeah. Absolutely. So we've got uh, there is a solid team there. It's a big team there. Yeah. Yeah. So. Neverwinter is getting a lot of love. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Neverwinter Nights, are there any updates coming to increase the bone limits on skins? It, the limit is now 17, which just isn't enough. Uh, I can look into that. Once again, I've gotten a lot of feedback, and these are things I haven't necessarily heard yet. Once again, I've only been here for a month, so uh, I'm working through those and setting priorities to things that we can work on. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're uh, ramping up the team there. Uh, there's a lot to come. Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition is an ongoing project. So uh, we, you've seen a lot of the backend changes to that game, and I'm hoping mm -hmm. that we can show more love to the casual players. Totally. Forward. Yeah, and I mean, like, there are things that are not going to be immediately evident as well, which are, like, optimizations and so on that you guys are not going to see uh, every time you boot up the game when there's a new build, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff that happens. Yeah. Uh, and there are some exciting new things still coming down the pipe. You know what I would love to see, personally? What would you love to see? Is new art on that main menu screen. <laughs> That's something I'm actively looking into. Cool. Yeah. That, that tiny little window that fits in the very middle of your screen? Yeah. Yeah, I want to do something about that. Yeah. So we could do something cool there. Mm -hmm. um, have you given any more consideration to adding a fourth class? I can't help but think of it, the replay value it would, could add to the game. Is that for Neverwinter Nights or? Uh, I would have, yeah, I would, I'd have to know more. Needs okay. more information. Cool. If you're watching still, give us an update to that question mm -hmm. and uh, we'll do what we can. 
think there are more than four classes in Neverwinter. I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm confused. Sure? This is my confused face. Yep. Cool. What time do we got here? We got six minutes left. Ask your questions, people. Okay, so yeah, that class is for Neverwinter Nights. Okay. Well, uh, let's look, yeah, let's look into, into it. it. Let's make it happen. Cool. All right. Multi-class. Okay. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that is on the bug tracker. I've seen that one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. We need to figure out what is uh, what is preventing that and unprevent it. But um, yeah. I cannot imagine multi-classing four times personally, but well, you can I'm, get up to fourth, 40th I'm level, a pleb right? when it comes to playing D&D. So like, uh, like it, I, I spend, uh, Jensen Nova in there can attest to it. I spend way too much time, like just trying to figure out how to level up my character one level. So, <laughs> um, we did like Gestalt in one of our campaigns, mythic. We play Pathfinder more than D&D. I'm sorry. Don't kill me. Um, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, that's, that's just my group. I like D and D personally. Yeah, but no, it, I think it's good that uh, like I play a lot of D and D. I think it's good to try out other systems like Shadowrun, Numenera, etc. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah just, Shadowrun that's yeah. owned by somebody else. Yeah, though, so. yeah, yeah. And uh, the, the guys over at um, guys and gals over at Harebrained Schemes mm-hmm. did a fantastic job on those games. I love those. Yeah, and I wish uh, there was more Neverwinter or sorry, Neverwinter Returns. No, uh, <laughs> Shadowrun Returns. Uh, sequels out there. Hong Kong was great, but and I kickstarted that actually. Yeah, me too. Um, but yeah, yeah. and yeah. I still haven't played BattleTech, but BattleTech's fun probably too. Probably should. Yeah, keep right. it going, guys. I'm just. Uh, so do good. I have any more questions from the community here? Uh, uh, what is the new title that you are working on, Luke? Question mark. Smiley face. I'm not working on new titles. I'm working on the old titles. Yep. So there we go. <laughs> Luke is all about the classics. I am all about the classics. Producing. I am the I am the in studio curator of all the legacy games. There we go. Yep. There's your answer for that. Yep. Okay. Uh, so uh, to before I wrap it up, let's give away that T-shirt. Let's give away that T-shirt. All right. Who is it? Space Jaws. Space Jaws. Like a shark flying through space. So Jaws. Jaws four. There you go. Yep. I, Do it. Jason did it. I, I don't want to watch that. <laughs> no, no. It was, uh, Leprechaun. Leprechaun. Leprechaun in, did it. Yeah. It Jason did it. Leprechaun 1, Leprechaun 2, yeah. Leprechaun in LA, and then Leprechaun in space. Yes. Leprechaun in a, LA was horrible. They had him dressed in LA gear the whole time. Yeah. It was like the epitome of everything that was terrible in the 90s. Oh, Leprechaun. All right. So, Time uh, for a horror movie marathon. No, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, so if to wrap it up, it uh, we're going to be at PAX. Yep. If you're not at PAX, uh, watch the live stream. You have a great chance to um, win a portrait pack. Oh, and if you haven't already, sign up for our Beamdog newsletter. Uh, I'll be drawing somebody from that list, uh, existing signups and new signups, mm-hmm. uh, next week. Yep. I think on tuesday or wednesday uh and so somebody who has signed up will win a community portrait you'll get a portrait yes so made uh, of you you send us a photo and we will draw a picture of you that looks like the rest of the we will have a professional artist draw your picture not one of us uh so sign up for the newsletter show up to pax uh at the panel or watch us on twitch You'll find all the details on our um, on our blog there. We've got a fanatical sale. We want to see you at Edmonton Expo. We are still hiring, so we've got three postings up right now, and we will have more in the future. Uh, I don't know. Is there anything that I've missed? I don't know, man. You you, you, that, you were firing those off really quickly. Yeah. So. All right, and one last question last from question. the community. What's your opinion on Wizardry 4? Oh, wow. Um, so the reboots were very much Wizardry 1 and 2 type games that mm-hmm. I worked on personally. Uh, I feel like the Wizardry series really kicked off around Bane of the Cosmic Forge. Um, so, like, yeah, 6 and 7 were kind of my favorites. Right. Uh, my first Wizardry game was Crusaders of the Dark Savant. So, um, yeah. I've I mean, only ever played right. one Wizardry game, and that was Wizardry 8. Oh, goodness, the 3D one. Yes. Oh, wow. And I didn't play it for long. That is a venerable series yes. of games. So There's right. a lot to get through there. Cool. 
Yeah. All right, Dan's signaling to wrap it up. So we're going to wrap it up. We will see you next week. Yep. Uh, I will not be here. I will be en route to PAX, but Luke will be I here. I will still be here. Yep, and uh, will he will be spot. talking with uh, Kristen, who are, who's our QA lead. Yep. And you guys are going to get into the nitty-gritty on the Infinity Engine. We're going to talk Infinity Engine. Cool. All Explain right. Explain how some of these bugs happened. Great staring at a chat with you all. Mm-hmm. And uh, Love we you will guys. see you next week.